town council regular meeting to order. Lindsay, can you please call the roll? Certainly. Councilor Gardner? Present. Councilor Kokoraitis? Present. Councilor Schoon? Councilor Schoon? He's on mute. Am I on mute? Yes, present. President Mellon. Yes. All right. Um, at this time, I would ask everyone to please join in a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. America and to the republic for which, which, which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. That brings us to the uh, 45th Street uh, update. All right, Brad, Lee. Good evening. I see Brad on. Uh, do you want to take this? Can you hear? I'm on. I think Lee was on too, but there he is. I am on. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, update for 45th uh, at the underpass for 45th Street between Calumet and Southwood Drive. Retaining wall three. Uh, construction continues. There is panel deliveries for the T-wall. They are installing those and also backfilling those. Uh, excavation for the underpass itself, the bottom slab, was completed today. So additional under drains are expected to be installed beginning tomorrow and continue through the week. The uh, reinforcement installation for that bottom slab is expected to begin as early as May 4th that week. Um, the road itself for 45th, the new alignment, I mentioned at the last meeting that there were unsuitable soils. So those have been undercut uh, and stabilized essentially from the Centennial Village uh, portion of 45th down to the underpass itself. Retaining wall one, which is at the southwest corner of the underpass, that is expected to begin construction the week of May 4th. The 54 inch steel casing, uh, which would be just south of CN between the underpass and Calumet Avenue was completed. Um, that is in place and the structure, the drainage structures are complete now on the south side for that run. BP pipeline did some corrosion repairs at the southeast corner of Calumet and 45th. That is complete. They have demobilized off site and acceleration for the underpass and 45th Street operations continue. That is in the third week. As far as Calumet Avenue, uh, construction continues there. Um, as you know, there is one lane each direction on Calumet as well as on 45th west of Calumet. Asphalt paving at the southwest corner was completed today. Therefore, tomorrow weather permitting, uh, we anticipate uh, switching our MOT or maintenance of traffic so we can construct the northbound lanes. That meaning the traffic on Calumet will be uh, still kept in one lane each direction. They will be traveling in the southbound lanes. There will be two westbound lanes on 45th and then the eastbound lane uh, will be essentially using that eastbound left turn to go northbound. That will be for left and right turns there at Calumet. Uh, following that, the temporary barrier wall will be installed to separate traffic from the construction area and then asphalt milling and then underground work will continue following that. In addition, CN is expected to be on site tomorrow to extend the uh, crossing arms because northbound Calumet will essentially be traveling down the middle of what is currently Calumet. So there'd be a, a gap there with those crossing arms. Those will be extended. 
so that those uh, those gates come fully across uh, to protect northbound lanes as well. Um, just points of note as far as uh, restoration along Camellia between JDH and Walsh and Kelly, that's expected to resume in the next week or two. Um, trying to find out Walsh and Kelly will be doing most of that work, uh, see what their schedule is. And then we have also noticed an increase in pedestrian traffic along uh, East 45th at the construction site. So there are pedestrians that, that do typically walk across the shoe fly the railroad tracks and then kind of take a peek at construction. So we try to kind of prevent them from doing that to some degree, but just an uh, FYI perhaps. So at this point, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Lee, uh, there was a question at the pre at a previous council meeting where there was an interest expressed in kind of getting a sense for the scope of acceleration utilized. Uh, not to put you on the spot, but could you ballpark how many hours have been utilized by the contractor uh, under acceleration? Currently, there's about 200 hours. And on average, I guess, for the three weeks that we have uh, been under acceleration, I would estimate that to about uh, $4,000 per week. I don't have any certified payrolls to confirm that, but that's my ballpark currently. Okay. Thank you for the question, Dustin. Uh, this is Steve. Just to build on that, any idea how we're doing on the extension for next year? It was, I think, in 49 days, if memory serves. Any ideas on that was the, the number yeah, down? Yeah, those were the delays, uh, the cumulative delays, the two delays were 49 days. At this point, in only you know three weeks, it's, it's really kind of hard to judge at that point as far as the schedule. Uh, and that progress goes hopefully by the the next council meeting. Perhaps I'll have a little bit better feel for that. Okay, thanks, Lee. Sure. Does anyone else have a question for Lee? Okay. Just a comment that we uh, that we saw a video of the T wall of what a T wall installation is like. It's quite uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's we're at a point where it's starting to get to be something you can imagine or I can imagine mm -hmm. anyway. So I, I understand why people may be trying to get a peek over there. I don't know if we need to think about signage or something like that, but um, it just means I think we're at a, a stage where this is, is starting to feel real for people, which is great. Yeah. yeah. Construction there. Obvious, it's obvious now it's very visible uh, with what's taking place there. You know, we've made sure that we're maintaining our sidewalk closure signs on the sidewalk. And at the same time, you know, when we see someone trying to cross those shoe flies, just try to at least indicate that perhaps they can <laughs> get a different perspective as opposed to crossing those train tracks. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's exciting. And instead of a, just a bunch of dirt moving around now, you're seeing something. So that's great. Yes. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. All right, um, that brings us to uh, what is usually the open to the public session of the meeting, but given um, the Zoom format, um, the last couple of meetings we've asked that, that the that residents who have questions or comments email those to uh, Dustin Anderson at munster.org and that we would, uh, that all the counselors would be uh, sent those questions and they'd also be included in the minutes. Uh, Dustin, did we receive anything for this meeting? We received two questions. Uh, one was from okay. Mr. Duovic. Those questions uh, were with regard to, uh, the first one was why is tennis allowed while playgrounds and golf are not uh, currently open? The answer was that if two people in a household decided to use a tennis court, they're not touching anything. There's no shared equipment like the wheel of a golf cart or a flagpole or anything like that, or the kiosk for uh, the ball station at the driving range. And the same thing goes with the playground. Playground is communal by nature. Uh, the second question was uh, with regard to the extension, uh, the, first, uh, uh, um, the first amendment to the development agreement uh, for Maple Leaf Crossing 
is he asked if the uh, 180 day extension is the only thing that uh, was contemplated in there. I answered affirmatively. And Wendy, what, what do you remember the third question? The third question was how many positive cases of coronavirus in Munster? And the answer was 55. Yes, uh, and I checked before uh, I came to the meeting and the answer is 59 as of today. So okay. those were the three. All right, and then you said, did you say you had a, a second person who had questions as well or did just... uh, one, one person uh, read the Northwest Indiana Times and saw uh, that Dyer had uh, extended the contract for their town manager and wanted to know the disposition of the contract for the Munster town manager. Okay. All right. So um, again, if people want to uh, send questions for our next meeting, uh, there's a good chance that we will still be conducting via Zoom. If not, then uh, they can bring those in into uh, you know in person. But um, that that closes our public session at this point and brings us to the consent agenda. I would move that we would suspend the rules and waive the readings and adopt the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Wendy, can you please but call the roll? I guess, Wendy, I do or have one question. I wait, do have wait. one question for the clerk treasurer. Um, I do see a number of refunds okay. that are occurring uh, because of canceled programs and things. Um, I guess I probably should ask this question a little bit earlier, but that just, that more or less is that going to affect some of the the fund or the appropriations for that park fund itself? It will, yes. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry for answering asking that question. That's okay. Okay, I'm fine. Okay. Any other questions? All right, Wendy, can you please call the roll? I will. I have um, Councillor Gardner making the motion to accept the consent agenda and um, Dr. Uh, Andy Coulteritis seconding it. And for the vote, Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Gardner votes yes. Councillor Coulteritis? Yes. Councillor Coulteritis votes yes. Councillor Spoon? Un unmute, Ken. I can see you speaking. I'm trying. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Hi. Can you yes. uh, your vote? Thank you. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Thank you. And President Mellon? Yes. Five to zero uh, approved on the consent agenda. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to old business. Uh, and we have the streetscape and corridor improvement plan, which was presented and discussed last week at our last meeting. Dustin, did you want to speak to this again? Uh, I can, we also have Tom here for uh, any questions oh, okay. that group might have as well. But uh, I know okay. that Tom did spend some time speaking with Tesca uh, and the representatives. Uh, Tom, would you like to share uh, the outcome of that conversation since you did the heavy lifting on it? Sure. As you may recall, the last meeting we presented the the contract and the scope of work for this um, Ridge Road and Calumet Avenue streetscaping study, um, or streetscaping plan, I should say. And there seemed to be strong support for it, but there was some concern uh, from the council that the, in the current environment of social distancing and uh, those types of things, we, would, we may not be able to <clears throat> completely um, address the scope of work as it was presented. So they had asked, you You had asked us to kind of go back and speak with the consultants about how we can maybe um, write down some of the things that we had been sort of discussing anyway. Uh, and so what we've done is we put together um, this addendum to the scope of work and we asked Tesca and Sam Schwartz to really address two things. One, how can they accomplish their public engagement tasks without having face-to-face -face interaction. And then two, how can we really um, 
collect the type of traffic data that we need to collect um, without being with having sort of unusual um, traffic circumstances right now. Um, so what we've done is, as I said, we put together this addendum and uh, it, it really identifies a handful of, of ways that they can do this work. Um, I'll just go ahead and, and read out the bullet points here. Um, but in terms of the traffic counting and that sort of thing, what we've done is we've uh, reached out to various partners, local and regional, and identified some pre-existing traffic data that we can use for the study. Um, that'll be used to set up the initial model and the initial analysis. And then, um, you know, once things get back to normal in the fall, they can go out and do the detailed traffic counts that they need to do and kind of validate some of those uh, modeling assumptions. And uh, so that's really the, the plan for how to address the traffic question. Um, with respect to the engagement portion of it, uh, we took a look at the existing scope and there's actually a number of tasks that can be accomplished and that were planned to be accomplished um, virtually anyway. There's, uh, there's a task that has the set of setting up a website, um, doing a, some online polling and doing some social media um, information distribution. So all those tasks will remain in the scope of work and will still be effective is there, they won't be altered in any way. Um, but with respect to some of the other things that we had planned to do, such as, you know, face-to-face -face, um, stakeholder interviews, uh, those types of things, um, what we're doing now is we're essentially going to transition like we are tonight to a, kind of a Zoom platform or some kind of um, interactive video conferencing um, setup or application. And um, they've actually got some tools in their toolbox that they had suggested that they could use a little bit more, which um, include mind mapping software and what's called Mentimeter polling. So they're going to start sort of rely a little bit more heavily on those types of things. Um, and what we've done is we've kind of set up everything as a parallel to the existing scope. In the event that you know we can get back to normal, then we can just very easily transition back to our original kind of plan of work. Uh, I do have. If anyone has any questions about Tesco's experience using some of these online and electronic tools, uh, Jody Mariano, who's the project manager from Tesco, is here on the call, and she'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, I'll just point out though that none of these applications that they're proposing are kind of new to them. These are all things that they've done uh, in the past. So they have a lot of experience with this type of work. And when I brought this up to them, it, it was not difficult for them to pull together uh, a set of tools from their toolbox. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, counselors, do you have any questions for Tom or uh, the Tesco rep. Uh, Madam President. <clears throat> uh, Tom, I would like to say thank you for bringing some additional clarity to how this is going to work. I feel good that uh, we're using some some tools that the team has experience with. And in fact, we might get higher participation in those phases of the program since everyone's at home anyways and getting more and more comfortable using these things. Uh, my question also for Jody, I think your camera's on now. Nice to meet oh. you. Thank you. Um, what, what advice might you give us of how to engage the public in some of this um, stuff? I'd just like to hear what some best practices might be. Sure, absolutely. And good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, like you all, we're kind of all getting used to a new reality. Um, but here at Tesco, we've been using these uh, programs and tools for a long time. They're just now uh, becoming that much more um, applicable now that we can't do face-to-face -face meetings uh, in the meantime. So, um, you know, the back end of this memo that um, Tom uh, has provided here has a slideshow that shows some tools and best practices when doing 
online engagement. And I'd be more than happy to have sort of a, a time set up where I can go through them specifically with you all. But I could just tell you that in a nutshell, um, the most important thing is to really just make sure that um, we're keeping the communication lines open. And so that means that when we have a meeting, for instance, with public, making sure that we've advertised it very well and very clearly, um, advertising it in a way that people understand, one, how to use the software, but also so that they understand what the meeting is about, what kind of information we'll be presenting to them, what we're going to be asking from them, so that when they log on to the meeting, um, people sort of have a level of expectation as to what the meeting will be about. And then when the meeting is all done, making sure that we follow back up with them afterwards. So reiterate what we heard, share back some of the input activities that we've done. And so it's really all about closing the loop. It's the same thing that we always do whenever we meet face to face, only now we've got sort of these screens and technology pieces that we need to make sure everyone's comfortable doing. Um, you know, and when we're doing these projects and we can't be in a room and read everybody's body language, we just need to be that much more attentive uh, to one another, making sure that everybody has a chance to um, ask a question, make sure everybody understands. And so it does take a little bit more time and patience, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's important. This is a really important project uh, for the town and, and, we, and we're very excited about it as well. Thank you. I don't know if that answered your question. I kind of rambled for a while, but I'm happy to talk about it further. <laughs> well, I really like the idea of uh, some sort of offline session um, to oh, yeah. further un understand the scope. And I'm just speaking for myself, but I think we all feel the same way from last week. Um, we're very excited about this and what it can mean. Ridge Road, Calumet, that is the, in many ways, the heart of our town. And it really helps us get ready for the for the TDD and the train that's coming. So um, thanks for being here. We're excited. Great. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey, counselors, anybody else have a question? Seeing that there's no questions, I would move that we would um, waive the readings and adopt and authorize the town manager to enter into the service agreement with Tesca Associates in the amount not to exceed 98,255 to develop a streetscaping and corridor improvement plan for the Ridge Road and North Calumet Avenue business districts and uh, approve that adopted on first reading tonight. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Seeing none, Wendy, can you please call the roll? Certainly. I show that uh, Chuck Gardner made the recommendation and that was seconded by Councillor Tulewitzki. Um, Councillor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councillor Gardner votes yes. Councillor Culturitis? No. Councillor Culturitis voted no. Councillor Schoon? He's on mute. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And President Mellon. Yes. The vote passes four to one. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, that, uh, that now brings us to new business. And the first item under new business is the easements for the Little Calumet River. Yes. So this is uh, an item that uh, Dan Ripe had asked to be brought to the town uh, and I committed to be complete by the end of the first quarter uh, with all the calamity. This did not make it onto an agenda previously, uh, but it is here now. And this is to grant the Little Calumet River Basin Development Commission easements for both the Holman Avenue pump station that is just north of the 8094 expressway still in Munster and the uh, River Drive pump station uh, that is behind the bend on River Drive along the Little Calumet River. Uh, I know that uh, Dan is on the call or was at some point, and if he'd like to jump in, uh, he is more than welcome to. Uh, but what you have before you is a perpetual easement and a resolution where you would resolve to grant those easements uh, to the Little Cal. Okay. Dustin, if I could ask, are we talking about four different pump stations or two different pump stations? Two, two, sir. 
Okay. The there are four documents uh, associated with each uh, with 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 the the pump stations. One is a map, and one is a legal description for each. So that makes four documents. Uh, so there's a, a map and a legal description for the Holman pump station, and then there's a map and a legal description for the River Drive pump station. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? I get to it, Dan. Um, I... Since Dan is online, before I make a motion to accept the resolutions, does he? Is there anything that he would like to present to the council? <clears throat> Good evening. This is Dan Ripe. Yes, sir. Uh, there's nothing really truly to add. It's required by the Army Corps of Engineers that we have proper and legal access across your property. And that's simply what this is doing. Okay. Ken, you're on mute. If you're, I think it looks like you're trying to speak. Pressing to get off. You're on mute again, but when you turn it, when you turn it off, uh, we are getting a lot of feedback from you. I'm getting terrible feedback when I do that. Okay. If you have a question and you want to text it to one of us, we I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll listen to it. <laughs> Okay. No question here. Okay. All right. So no question from Ken. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, counselors, we have a resolution in front of us. I'm not sure what the resolution doesn't have a number. Are we just approving the resolution approving and authorizing a perpetual easement agreement by and between the state of Indiana through the Little Calumet River Basin Commission and the town of Munster pursuant to Indiana Code 14 13 2? If that's the mo motion for the resolution, I would make that motion. Okay. Does that sound correct to? A resolution number would be added uh, after adoption. Okay. It, there's one, there's been one assigned. It's okay. 2021. It, it's on the um, agenda, but it may not have made it onto the paperwork. So okay. it's timing. Okay. All right. So we have a motion. Chuck has made a motion to uh, accept the resolution as presented. I second it. We have a second. I'm not sure I, if that was Andy or Steve. I saw Steve talking, but I thought I heard Andy. So, um, yeah, it was it was a uh, council call. Try this. Okay. So, any any further discussion or questions regarding this before we have Wendy uh, take the vote? Okay. Seeing none, Wendy, can you please okay. call the Very roll. Good. So, um, Councilor Gardner. Um, yes. To adopt the resolution and it was seconded by Councillor Coulteritis. Councillor Gardner voted yes. Yes. Councillor Coulteritis? Yes. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Tulewitzki? Yes. And President Mellon? Yes. Very good. The resolution passes five to zero. Okay. And that brings us up to our, our next piece of new business, which now I have escaped um, me here for a second. It's okay. I, I'm going to start talking because it's, it's from the clerk treasurer's office. We have been closely okay. monitoring All right, I have. how to react and how to um, document uh, 
our reactions and actions that we're taking during the, the COVID-19 emergency health crisis. One of the recommendations mm -hmm. came through the State Board of Accounts that we um, adopt a policy, that we, the Town Council, adopts a policy that gives us the flexibility to um, follow the federal and state guidelines as we react to the various executive orders that are handed down through the legislator, legislation. And any one of uh, any practice that we adopt that impacts the home rule ordinance or um, any policies that need to be made, we, they will be brought before town council for the appropriate legislative action. And um, the clerk treasurer's office has been documenting for future audits the actions that we've taken and we've um, written out the reasons why we've done that. Okay. So we're asking for um, just approval of this policy from the town council. Okay, thank you. I would move that we adopt the policy stating the municipality will continue to adhere to federal and state guidelines during the national health emergency. I second it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions for Wendy at this time? Uh, seeing none, Wendy, can you please call the roll? Very good. I have the Councillor Tulowitzki um, made the motion to accept the policy and it was seconded by um, Councillor Coltritis. Councillor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councillor Gardner voted yes. Councillor Coltritis? Yes. Councillor Coltritis voted yes. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Schoon voted yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki voted yes and President Mellon? Yes. Councillor Mellon voted yes. So the policy has been accepted five to zero. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, that brings us to uh, item C, which is the first amendment to the development agreement with Maple Leaf Crossing LLC. Um, this amendment is, is for 180 days um, and it is for for a few reasons, um, people are working with you know less staff now. Also, um, there was some the title work because stop me if I if I'm missing something or add in Dustin if I'm missing something. Um, but the title work it had a little there was a little bit of issue because it had formerly been uh, owned by part of it had been owned by the railroad. Is that correct? That's correct. I've lost. Oh, okay. And also um, things like, you know, I spoke to the developer and he wants to go get everything going as soon as possible, but things like traffic studies, they're not, um, there's not the same pattern of traffic, obviously, as people aren't going um, and moving about as, you know, as they normally do. So sort of some, some things, but uh, the project is still on track according to the developer um this is it's not a case of anything or, you know businesses not wanting to uh continue moving forward with moving into that that development so this is just to make sure that everything can get get finished and so there won't be he wouldn't be in um uh, what word am i looking for breach the breach of the contract so that is what I have to say about it. Dustin, if you have anything else. I think that sums it up nicely. Uh, okay. The title works complicated and there's fewer people working on it. Yep. Okay. I would make a motion that we accept the, the uh, first amendment to the development agreement for Maple Leaf Crossing. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions at this time? Has the developer, is there such a thing as a, again, this is a, a timeline of how he sees progressing in the next six months to eight months? Um, is there, because 
there's still certain approvals he still needs to get from the plan commission. Is that correct also? That is correct. He, um, when I spoke to him last week, the engineering portion um, was, was over 80% completed. So I would think that that would be coming soon. We could ask, we could ask him to provide that um, if we wanted to, but it seems like I would think that he might be trying to come to the next one, to the next plan commission. That would be, be my guess, but I can't say that for sure. I just know that he's continuing that um, he's still, you know, Hyatt is still on board and everything seemed to be moving in the same direction, yet just slowed a little bit with fewer employees in a couple places. Thank you. So we can ask for that. I see Mr. Westland waving. Waving? Oh, is there something? Yeah, I, was just, I was just waving. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, the, you know, the, 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 there are kind of two interrelated issues. Um, number one, Dustin alluded to the title work. We were uh, pursuant to a, a couple of months ago, we were supposed to transfer that one acre uh, parcel. And uh, there were some issues as Leanne uh, alluded to with the title policy, which you run into a lot of times when property back in the 1800s was originally railroad property. So uh, in an effort for us to be able to provide uh, a clean title to Mr. Leeser, um, there needs to be a fairly extensive title search done. And that's taken, as of last week, they were saying a couple of extra weeks um, because they just don't have the staff. And then I think, you know, secondly, there is a force majeure provision in the development agreement, which deals, like, deals with things like, you know, labor shortages and natural disasters and pandemics and things like that. So um, I don't think I, I fully had expected that this, you know, you're, you're going to get some more of these if this thing, if the stay at home order stays in place much more beyond May 1st, not necessarily with this developer, but there are going to be other ones that, you know, are going to have a hard time meeting deadlines. And, that, and that's why force majeure provisions are in contract. Thank you, Dave. The um, requested delay is for uh, roughly six months, and you had mentioned that it's rough, that it's mostly on track still, the development. Um, just curious, I guess, Chuck, you asked for a bit of an update on, on what the new development plan looks like. Just wondering how big of a delay this is. Well, according to the developer, he wants... He does not want it to take 180 days. He's ready. He's ready to go, anxious to go. I, I believe that this, from what he said, you know, this was just in case we don't know how long that this is going to continue, this delay. Mm -hmm. So this would cover it. But as soon as he can start building something, that's what he wants to do. Um, so that, you know, that's the best I can tell you as he, he, assured me and we had a lot, you know, a, a good conversation about it. Like I said, the Hyatt, they're all still on board. They're just dealing with COVID-19 related issues at this time. So um, I think that he, this is just so, so that this will definitely be enough time, you know, okay. in this, this first amendment. But hey, I, hey. I get the feeling he does not want to wait that long at all. <laughs> so. And I know from talking to Dustin and I had a conversation last week about, uh, you know, if things start to kind of drag a little bit, there are some potential workarounds we can do relative to that title policy that would allow them to get started. Um, you know, even, I mean, typically, you know, there's a sequence to these things that you kind of want to follow. Um, you typically want to have the property transferred before some of these other steps kind of come into place, but there are ways that we could get creative. Um, if Mr. Leeser is, is still looking to push and I know as of a couple of weeks ago, he was, so um, I was going to reach out to him and kind of throw out some of those options for being able to push through. 
Thank you, Dave. Okay. Yeah, I would encourage Mr. Westland to try to set up a meeting with Jay to try to keep this on track. The sooner the better. I agree. All right. Uh, so I don't think we we had a motion in a second. I'm losing track. Is that correct mm -hmm. or it not? Correct. Yes, we did. Are we ready for is, a vote? Anybody, I have no I think, further questions. Okay. I think we are, Wendy. Very good. I show that uh, Councillor Gardner um, made the motion to accept the amendment, and that was seconded by Councillor Tulowitzki. And Councillor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councillor Gardner voted yes. Councillor Coulteritis? Yes. Councillor Coulteritis voted yes. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Schoon voted yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councilor Tulowitzki voted yes. And President Mellon? Yes. President Mellon, so the motion to accept the amendment passes five to zero. Okay, all right. And that takes us to our next um, order of business, which is... It gets a little less policy heavy and a little bit more practical from here on out. Yeah, now we <laughs> need to buy some, we need to buy some mowers, yep. it appears. Or a mower. I take that back. First so mower. We went out, we have four bids for a mower and uh, we would like to buy uh, a John Deere 1600 Turbo Series 3 commercial wide area mower from Castagonia Tractor in the amount not to exceed $43,177.78. This is in their five year capital program. I have uh, Superintendent Chris Spolnick on the phone if you have any detailed questions. Chris, you are unmuted. Yeah, can I help you? Only if there's a detailed question. Hello? Hello. Hey, Chris. <laughs> I would love for Chris to get some air time. I have no questions, however. <laughs> okay. Well, there's another Neither item. There's another item. We could, we could still make it happen. It could get exciting with the small wheel loader. No questions yeah. here. Oh. All right. All right. Then I would make a motion that we accept um, the bid from Castanega Tractor in the total of, I just lost the page, of $43,177.78. And that would be for John Deere 1600 Turbo Series number three commercial wide area mower. So that dollar amount is not what I have here. Forty-three thousand one eighty. No, forty-three thousand one hundred seventy-seven dollars and seventy-eight cents. Yeah. Does that match what you're saying, Ken? That's okay. Okay. Do we have a motion? Second. And a second. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the first. And or was that you, Councillor Tulowitzki? That yes, second? that was me. Very good. Thank you. Okay. I think since there are no questions, I can say there's most likely no discussion on this. Stop me if I'm wrong, but I think we're ready for a vote, Wendy. Very good. Um, I show that uh, Councillor Gardner motion to accept the bid and that was seconded by Councillor Tulowitzki. Councillor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councillor Gardner voted yes. Councillor Coulteritis? Yes. Councillor Coulteritis voted yes. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Schoon voted yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki voted yes, and President Mellon? Yes. Voted yes. The, um, uh, to accept the bid passes five to zero. All right, thank you, Wendy. And that brings us to um, item E, which is the purchase of another piece of equipment, the small wheel loader. Uh, so I assume we have so very similar here. Yep, a uh, uh, piece of uh, significant equipment that is in their five-year capital plan. Okay. Three qualified bids. You, know, you look at the trading costs. It's a pretty straightforward transaction. Uh, Chris, if you have anything to add, uh, I know we would love to be the benefit of your experience. Mm -hmm. Well, we had 
10 people demo. We had all three uh, units brought into the yard. We took them out, drove them around, um, took them through color sacks to see how tight they would turn. And um, the cat out um, outperformed all three, you know, the other two machines. And we would really like to get the uh, cat loader. Great. Okay. Thank you, Chris. I'm glad you spoke already. I was otherwise to give you some airtime. I was going to ask about the slight edge in operator ergonomics, uh, but I'll let, it, I'll let it go. Thank you, Steve. Oh, oh. Uh, sorry. I, if there's, uh, I would make a motion uh, to approve the purchase of one 2020 Caterpillar 930M small wheel loader from Altor for Caterpillar in the amount of one thousand seven hundred dollars and one hundred and seventy one thousand. Sorry, one hundred seven thousand one hundred seventy dollars. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, I believe this will be the same, Wendy. I think we're ready for a for a vote. Very good. I have the councilor Tulewitzki um, made a motion to accept the bid for the small wheel loader, and it was seconded by Councilor Schoon. Councilor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councilor Gardner voted yes. Councilor Coulteritis. Yes. Councilor Coulteritis voted yes. Councilor Schoon? Yes. Councilor Schoon voted yes. Councilor Tulewitzki? Yes. Councilor Tulewitzki voted yes. And President Mellon? Yes. Councilor Mellon voted yes. The um, council voted five to zero to accept the bid for the small wheel voter. All right, thank you, Wendy. Uh, that brings us up to uh, item F, which is approval of police department invoices. And I believe uh, Lieutenant Pyrick, I saw it was on the call. Yep, he is on the call. If he has, some, if he has something that he, if he wants to add or discuss. Uh, a little color on the project, John. So this is a this has been an ongoing project for years. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we yep. can. Okay. This has been an ongoing project, obviously for uh, years, and um, every year we we slowly upgrade the camera system. And as we as we move from a standard definition camera into high definition cameras, which is I mean you can't even buy the standard standard definition anymore. And, and the pictures become clearer. We're able to read more license plates, see more stuff that's going on. Um, the storage for those becomes um, more. And um, we've, we've, we've moved with, I want to say, eight so far in intersections, which, which would just cover two intersections. So we're still improving the intersections. But in also, uh, the Parks Department has added a few cameras uh, the FD has added a few cameras. So all those taxed our servers. So is what we had to do was com basically completely rebuild that. And with the squad cars, as we update squad cars, we also update those cameras to HD, which, which increases all that storage also. So um, the, the server functions for, it, it's essentially three camera systems, but the town, we, we have four. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, and I can explain it all. Uh, is anyone looking at this time for um, more of an explanation from Lieutenant, Lieutenant Pyrick? I may, maybe just one question is, is there, is this part of a plan to, are, are we gonna be adding more and more cameras throughout, throughout town? Uh, we we do. I mean, that's that's our that is our idea uh, going forward. Uh, we we currently don't, and I'm not an expert on this uh, the whole fiber thing. But with with the construction on 45th, and we're eventually uh, someday hopefully get to Main Street, um, hopefully get out west to uh, the Lansing Line on 45th, and then hopefully east um, on 45th towards Highland. Um, and, and when we get that, that fiber out there, then we would, that, that would be our next thing would be to put cameras in those locations. And then also, like I said, there's still multiple intersections around town that, that still have the standard definition cameras. So 
the, the system was built with the, um, uh, the input of impact and basically it was built for the future. So it can handle extra cameras and stuff like that. I, I did, I'm, I'm looking at the memo now and I did submit a, a changed one because that number up top does not match. Um, it should, I, I believe it should be 59, 594, I believe. I'd have to add that up real quick, but I thought I'd put in the change for that this afternoon. Okay, I'm sorry that uh, the document we're looking at here on the screen says uh, 59591. This was made on Friday. Uh, if you look online, uh, the most recent documents are there, so your change was incorporated. Okay, yeah, I, I, I want to say it was like a three dollar. I believe it was a, a typo for that, the one and the four at the end there. Have we worked with Impact for a number of years on these types of cameras and, and servers and stuff like that? Has that been like a four or five year relationship with Impact? So, so the the Impact just once the town adopted Impact, we we have been working. Um, Basically, with whoever the next vendor is, when 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 the camera system first started, so we we had multiple vendors. Now, now we we mainly work with obviously um, Impact is doing the servers and maintaining our stuff, but the the cameras, the intersection cameras are are normally purchased from uh, that comes out of Schneider Electric. Okay. okay. And then um, oh. Uh, the car cameras are, are, it's a Panasonic camera and it's a, it's a different, it's a CDS technologies that, that is a Panasonic rep. Okay. Thank you. But I have your, no further questions. To, to the spirit of your question, Councilman Gardner, the camera system that the Tana Munster utilizes is being built out for many, many, many years. Okay. Very Long good. before impact uh, came on board. Yep, that's good. Right. If there are no other questions, then I would make a motion to ratify the agreement between Impact and Munster Police Department executed on February 4th, 2020. And can I also make, well, I guess that's the first motion I make. Second. We have a motion. Uh, I second it. Okay. All right. Any other discussion before Wendy calls the vote? All right, Wendy. Very good. Ready. From Councillor Gardner, motion to accept the agreement with impact. And it was seconded by Councillor Colteritis. Councillor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councillor. Uh, Gardner voted yes. Councillor Coulteritis? Yes. Councillor Coulteritis voted yes. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Schoon voted yes. Councillor Tulewitzki? Yes. Councillor Tulewitzki voted yes. And President Mellon? Yes. Councillor Mellon voted yes. To uh, The vote is five to zero to accept the impact invoice. Then I would I would ask the the amount for the invoice is fifty nine thousand five ninety four. Is there any sense so we can make that next motion? I can use a proper term or proper dollar amount. In six cents. Okay. If there are no other questions, then I would uh, make a motion that we improve that we approve Impact's invoice for a total of fifty nine thousand five hundred ninety four dollars and six cents. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Wendy, can you call the vote? Certainly, I show Councilor Gardner made the motion to accept the um, invoice and it was seconded by uh, Councilor Tulewitzki. Councilor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councilor Gardner voted yes. Councilor Coulteritis? Yes. Councilor Coulteritis voted yes. Councilor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Schoon voted yes. Councillor Tulewitzki? Yes. Councillor Tulewitzki voted yes. And President Mellon? Yes. President Mellon voted yes. So the, it is five to zero to accept the invoice. Okay. 
we have one more. Thank you. Two on more. The, one more. Uh, the Impact Networking LLC true up or renewal. What is minor? Uh, you know what? It's I, minor electronics and then Schneider Electric. Yep. We have to do all, oh, okay. All, all of them will separately. And if it's okay, I'm going to uh, make a motion to ratify the agreement between Minor Electric Corporation and Munster oh, Police sorry. Department that's executed on April 1st. And I would also authorize the uh, payment of the invoice to Minor Electronic Corporation for $3,072. Second. Good. Uh, Councilor Tulowitzki, second. Yeah, thank you. All right, and we're ready for a vote, I believe. Very good. I have Councillor Gardner made the motion and it was seconded by Councillor Tulowitzki. Councillor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councillor Gardner voted yes. Councillor Coulteritis? Yes. Councillor Coulteritis voted yes. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Schoon voted yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki voted yes. And Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Mellon voted yes. So that is accepted five to zero. Okay. And then finally, Schneider Electric. Yeah, fine. One more. Yep. I would make a motion that we ratify the agreement between Schneider Electric and Munster Police Department, executed on March 24th, 2020, and also authorize the payment of the invoice for $9,940. I second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. Wendy, can you call the roll, please? Certainly. I show that Councillor Gardner um, made the motion. It was seconded by Councillor Coulteritis. Councillor Gardner, how do you vote? Yes. Councillor Gardner voted yes. Councillor Coulteritis? Yes. Councillor Coulteritis voted yes. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Schoon voted yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki voted yes. And, and President Mellon? Yes. President Mellon voted yes. It passes five to zero. Okay. May I just thank um, Lieutenant Pyrick for sitting in as our as the acting chief while Chief Shekels on on duty with Nissa. Thank you for being here tonight and stepping in to that role. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. And that brings us to impact uh, item G. All right, so uh, we have a choice uh, tonight for you to consider. Uh, we have used Impact since 2017. Uh, they have uh, done, uh, I would say, a tremendous job uh, bringing the town into compliance uh, and uh, a more secure uh, and redundant environment. So in that, uh, contract that we currently have is a three-year contract. Uh, it expires at the end of this year uh, in October. Uh, each year there is a cause for true up because as the needs of the town evolve, the devices that they uh, support expand the number of servers, things like that. It's, it's, a, it's a fluid situation and at the end of each year there's a, there's a true up cost to what did we actually need them for? So there, there's a base and then did they have to do more than uh, we said they would probably have to do it? If they do, then there's the true up uh, here. What, th what they have proposed uh, is an alternative to a true up, which would be more expensive than our current IT spend. Our current IT spend is uh, 17,115 a month. And the true up would raise that uh, by two, $2,000 and change to $20,738. Uh, uh, Impact proposes uh, a five-year extension of their contract, uh, which would include 90 days of no payment. And when that uh, payment begins, they would propose a monthly price of 13,000. So 4,000 less than what we currently spend ostensibly because they would lock up uh, and have this business be predictable for uh, a significant period of time. Uh, I have no complaints with Impact. Uh, they are reliable, prompt, professional. Uh, I have not had a bad experience, uh, but also five years is a long time. 
uh, I think they've earned the right to have the question asked to council, what would be your preference? Uh, and if your preference is A or B or some other uh, solution that you'd like to talk about, that's fine. But I do believe they've earned the right to at least ask the question. So I bring before you two options. One is a true up uh, for $20,000 a month or an extension of $13,000 a month for five years. Let me, let me ask this question. This is the first time I've heard of a true up. Um, is that something that is that what, if we went with the true up option, then it's, that's what we're paying for the next, uh, whatever, uh, five months and up until October. And then the contract is up. Yes. Is it, that's what, and then, okay. So if we stayed as we are right now, we're, it's going to be $20,000 no matter what. No. Right. If we stay, okay, let if me we stay. Let if me, we stay as is, it doesn't become seventeen thousand. It's twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, the, 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 because they're supporting much more equipment than they originally were. We okay. we have added to their plate and asked them to do more than uh, the contract provided. So that's okay. what this rub is for. And it's kind of like a data plan, right? So you're allowed to send a thousand texts a month, and then all of a sudden you spend you you, you send fifteen hundred. Well, those five hundred extra, you're you're gonna you're gonna spend whatever the contract says. Okay. Thank you. And Dustin, in previous years, ha have we paid the true up at the end of the year and they're proposing to rather than wait to the end of the year, do it we have on a monthly a basis? We have, we have paid a true up previously. It's an annual thing. And the, if I look at the proposal right, if I'm looking at it right, if let's say Chuck said it's five months, uh, so we're going to be paying, well, anyways, so we'll pay three thousand more a month for five months, say fifteen thousand. And then we have to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, scope out, bid out, interview, uh, potentially change, yeah. potentially change uh, vendors, bring them up to speed. So there, there's a there, there's a there's a cost associated with that. Sure. I can't quantify it as I sit here right now, but there is a certainly a convenience and a time cost. And so option one if would we be. Go to, with, hmm. Oh, if we go with the 20,000, will we actually save money in the long run? It would uh, be determined on what the market says. There's no guarantee that uh, the next vendor would come in and say, we're going to come in below uh, any price. I, I don't know what the market says right now. I'm a little uncomfortable going five years, especially in the computer business technology so much changes so quickly and of course that goes beyond our our terms as well so we're obligating the next council to make those payments uh, I think That's my first fair. choice would be to go with a th another three-year contract I don't know how that sounds to other people I can go back to Impact and ask them what their price would be for a three-year contract. Well, don't if, if the other four counselors mm -hmm. don't like the idea. Well, it's an intriguing thought that it goes beyond the, you know, the, this council's term. Are there other similar services that we do? Like what's the precedent or guidance around that from the town? Very where you get in trouble, you can't bind uh, a town with me, right? Like you, you, can't, you, you, you can't hang the next council with me. Uh, you inherited waste management for your sanitation service, right? Uh, for uh, sewer density testing, we have the same uh, firm that does that. Uh, Miner Electric does our vehicles. Schneider Electric does the cameras. Midwestern Electric does our electrical work. I mean, there are hosts and hosts of professional services that uh, serve uh, beyond the scope of any single council. And that's very normal. Where you get in trouble uh, with, if you're a school board uh, superintendent or a town with a town manager. Mm -hmm. And so if I understand this right, we're going to pay 15,000 under option one additional, um, let's say the five months for the end of the year. 
Option B, they're saying we're going to drop that to 13172 but also 90 days, no payment. So does that mean we're getting another roughly 42000 discount? Yes. And what about true ups going forward? I mean, is there a chance we go to next year and the, the, the true up is going to get us, you know, back, back to 17 or, I mean, is that part uh, of the contract as well? The true up is based on uh, services. So if you look at added supported devices, that's mm -hmm. what it, it's, uh, it's based on. Uh, I am more than happy to say, you know, council was warm towards the, the, the reduced price, but there was some concern about uh, a true up maximum and a minimum. Uh, would you be willing to talk about a cap on the true up? I think that's a totally reasonable request to make. Okay, yeah, and I, I do appreciate the opportunity to save some money at this point in this budget year. Um, I think that's a, a smart move and a nice offer. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, it seems like quite a savings, but but the uh, the true up question is valid because if we come to the end of next year, you know, is the thirteen thousand that's basically, let me ask you, is it that based on what they're doing right now, what they've seen our, what our needs are? So if yes. we didn't add anything else, it would stand at 13. Okay. It would, yeah, it, there, there, there would, there's probably, I don't know the answer specifically what we would pay 30, 365 days from now. Uh, I don't want to mm -hmm. misspeak. But uh, right. if we don't uh, add any devices or expand their required services, the price that we pay, there, will, there won't be a true up. Okay. And are they pretty good, Dustin, about working with us to update our technology so it becomes less expensive to, to maintain and operate? Is that something we've done in the past three years with them? Yeah, over the past three years, we've done uh, a number of significant upgrades to our IT environment, uh, most significantly around redundancy and security, which doesn't necessarily make it cheaper, but it does make it safer. Mm -hmm. uh, we have migrated to uh, solid state devices that are using a, a virtual desktop. You can plug it in anywhere, basically, and log in. Uh, if you have that specific device. We have some employees using that right now to work remotely on occasion during uh, the current calamity. Uh, they've been very, very amenable to meeting our needs where we need them met. Uh, when they signed on, they had no idea that they would be supporting the transition from standard definition to high definition cameras and license plate recognition cameras and things like that. And yet here they are doing an admirable job. So I found them to be... Uh, flexible and reliable uh, and expedient with their service. Okay, and are we like a, uh, a big, really big customer to them or are they a pretty big firm? They're a very large firm. Okay. Okay, I have no further questions. My concern with the, a five-year contract is just, what type of out do we have in the middle if we're not happy with their uh, their service or their their product that they're giving us um, is is that fairly well spelled out and and again I I there there is something to be said about a three year contract especially with the ever changing world of of computer technology I can't speak uh, with certainty about the out I know we've talked about it previously uh, the uh, impact team and I and there's a notice provision in there but I, I would not put myself in a position where I would misspeak and uh, try to cite that chapter and verse to you okay. so it sounds like there's uh, some warmth maybe some mild reluctance uh, I am more than happy to do a little bit more legwork on this and bring you something that you're enthusiastic about. Uh, would you want me to bring back a three-year option? 
I think there are two answers to that, Dusty. Yes, I mean, if, if we had answers to the five-year uh, contract at this, what seems to be an attractive price of 13,000 something, um, if those answers are, you know, we're happy with those answers, we may still want to do that. But then in, if we're not, or we're still a little bit lukewarm toward the, the longer five-year contract than the three-year, as there's, as uh, how would they, how would they um, write that? So yes. So, you know, I'd like to have some questions answered about the five-year that were brought up. So we'd, so we could still consider that if it happens to be quite a bit less than what they would be uh, charging for a three-year. And those questions were, what kind of out do we have? And is it possible to have a cap on the true up? Is that accurate? Yes. I, yes. Yeah. Yes. Dustin, in looking at the contract, I would also, the, the terms, this is one of those automatically renewing deals. So uh, you'd want that out of there. Right, because I mean, this, ag this agreement re renews on its own term for periods of one year. Um, okay. With an so annual three, increase, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we should, um, we should table this. Sounds like a table. Table this until our next, until you can get more information from impact. Sounds good. Yes. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. So that brings us to reports. And I believe Wendy has something to say regarding the 2020 census. I do. I'm pretty excited. Um, Munster is doing very well in our numbers. The national percentage is 50.7%. Indiana is 54.1%. The town of Munster is coming in at 69.3%. And in the state of Indiana, we are tied for eighth place as far as the number of town cities that have turned it in. Um, our neighbors to the south, St. John, they are in second place and they are at 79.8%. So come on, let's get out there and uh, get these taken care of and submitted. Uh, it's exciting that we're doing as well as we're doing. Um, the dates that are coming up, you can respond online until the end of October. We'd like you to do it sooner, but you have that option. Um, the census is going and doing groups such as nursing homes and larger apartment buildings. Um, I believe, I filled out mine earlier, but the date that I read online is April 8th. That was the date that paper questionnaires were mailed to individuals and ho households. So now people have that option of filling it in manually and mailing it back the, the old fashioned way. The COVID virus has set back the door to door. So if you don't do it online, you don't do the paper, um, someone's gonna knock on your door and ask, help you with completing the information. And at this time, that's scheduled to begin in August, mid-August. Um, other just interesting things about the census, uh, they are hiring, and they are hiring in Lake County. You can go online to my census, my2020census.gov. They pay $22.50 to $25 an hour. There's an online application. They expect to work for several weeks, including nights and weekends. Um, the, we uh, recommend that you watch for any census scams. The census does not ask for your social security number, your credit card number, your bank account number, or your political party. So avoid any online or anyone that calls you asking for that information. And then the importance of the census is that um, it helps determine the number of members of the U.S. House of Representatives but it's funding for hospitals, libraries, fire departments, schools, and roads. So not just the town, but other units within our government rely on this money. So it's very, very important that this gets completed. We did do a, a mailing in the uh, March um, news you can use that went to all the homes and we did see a little uptake in participation. 
after that hit. Um, there was a Facebook post not that long ago that resulted in a nice uptick. So it is important to share the word and get people out there to complete their form. Wendy, I, I wonder if there's a, some kind of contest or something we can do. It's exciting to hear that we're eighth. It's disappointing to hear that we're second. Um, <laughs> I was wondering, you know, if I had to create a brand name or some kind of contest, I might call it um, Come to Your Census. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Yeah. And I don't know, I mean, we're, we're, we're obviously talking about things we can do publicly around holidays and one, and so I just wonder if there's if there's some sort of you know in in high school or in in grade school you get a pizza party if you behave well you know I just wonder what we might be able to do for the town if we can reach a certain number you know I was thinking the same thing Steve because I was starting to feel extremely competitive when I heard that St. John mm -hmm. was second I don't like that you know, I felt the same way I I thought, <laughs> I thought we were doing really well and then I flipped to another page and I thought, we're eighth, oh, excellent. And I scrolled up, I saw St. John and Dyer is right in our heels. So mm. um, yeah, okay. competitiveness comes out. Well, you know, the, you're talking about August is when the door-to-door -door happens. It's when we normally have Night Out Against Crime. It's mm -hmm. last year we were like number one in the state for that. So I wonder if there's, I don't know, something, so we can Perhaps get our yeah. competitive spirits up then. Yep. Yeah, perhaps having even a booth there. We do have some leftover flyers we can pass out, you know, really. Uh, other municipalities have done signage and, um, you know, out on the roadways. You may have seen some from Dyer, I believe, in Cherville on Main Street. We have not done any of that. The only thing that we've done is the, is the flyer. Um, so I like your idea. Let's try and I'll, I'll send uh, Officer Grice an email and get us a table reserved for national night out. Great. Come to your senses. <laughs> Good idea. You're in charge. Of, you're the artwork guy. You design that. <laughs> Keep us posted. We'll see. Thank uh, you. Right. I got a guy. Thank and you. <laughs> all completed yours, please. All right. So thank you oh. uh, for that. Wait. Can I add one last thing? Yes. I want you to know that we're beating Cedar Lake as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> and for those who know, Bob, Bob yes, I do. Lake I do. This champion for the census. So when I saw we were beating them, I thought, wow, we're really doing great. So. Okay. Uh, yes, because he is the big champion of the census. Yes, and they've yeah. done that, and they and I I really appreciate. It. They have been Cedar Lake has been helpful, very helpful to us. We've modeled our flyer after them, so kudos to them for their Good. spirit of cooperation, but we're doing better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good to know. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, and that brings us to announcements. All town council meetings will begin at 7 p.m., unless otherwise noted, and we have no meeting on April 27th. Um, the next meeting will be May 4th for regular town council and redevelopment commission. No meeting on the 11th. Uh, we're back on in the 18th, no meeting on the 25th, and we will be back on, the, on June 1st. It brings us to adjournment. So moved. Second. Aye. We have a motion <laughs> and a second. Uh, can, we do, can we do this as a voice, Wendy? Yes, we can. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? All right, so at 821, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. And, oh, no, not good night yet. Nope. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Nope. <clears throat> nope. We have I'm our really packed no. up for the last 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Andy was going to go. No one wants to be rude. I was ready to go. Forgot about it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> John, right, well, John sat through that whole meeting. I know I saw John was here. John is here. I, I saw as well. All right. Well, I won't delay. At 821, I will call to order the Town of Munster Redevelopment Commission regular meeting for April 20th, 2020. And um, Wendy, can you take the roll? Commissioner Gardner. Here, present. Commissioner Coltridis. Present. Commissioner Schoon. Present. Commissioner Tulowitzki. Present. 
And Commissioner Mellon? Present. And um, Commissioner Castro is in attendance as well, correct? I am. Greetings. Very good. Nice to have you. Oh, hi, John. Very good. Yep. Everyone is present. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Um, Dustin, did we receive any comments um, or questions uh, regarding the redevelopment meeting? We did not. Uh, From, I guess you could say uh, one third of Mr. Dumovich's comments uh, are applicable yes. as well here with the uh, question regarding Maple Leaf Crossing, but no other questions. Okay. All right. Um, so that will, so that brings us to the consent agenda. I make a motion that we waive the rules and adopt the consent agenda on first reading. Second. Okay, a motion and a second. Uh, Wendy, can you call uh, for the vote, please? Certainly. Commissioner Gardner? Yes. Commissioner Kulturitis? Yes. Commissioner Schoon? Yes. Commissioner Tulowitzki? Yes. Commissioner Mellon? Yes. We have five to zero uh, passing the consent agenda on a motion made by Gardner and seconded by Steve Tulowitzki. Okay, uh, thank you, Wendy. So we have no old business. Under new business, we have um, a repeating item from the town council meeting. It's the first amend amendment to the development agreement of Maple Leaf Crossing LLC. Um, and I, everybody, John, you were on the call, correct? When we went through this for the I town was. council meeting? Yes, yeah, I, I guess since it is a separate meeting, I will say briefly that um, this is just so to, uh, to make sure that the uh, developer is not in breach of the development agreement. Um, there have been a few issues regarding title. Um, it has taken longer to clear it because it was previously owned by the railroad. Uh, so the, as complicated things and with the COVID-19 situation, um, everyone is working with fewer employees um, or and then they're not in person, et cetera. So there's, that's an issue. Also the traffic study, when there's not normal traffic, would give us numbers that aren't realistic. So that's an issue. Um, but the developer is uh, anxious and ready to move forward as soon as possible. So that 180 days most likely will not be needed. This is just a in case, uh, and if, if we end up being locked down for a lot longer than what uh, it looks like we might be. So that, uh, that is all I have to say about that. <laughs> Isn't that a line from something? Uh, I would make a motion then that we would accept the first amendment to the development agreement for Maple Leaf Crossing. I second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? All right, Wendy, can you please call for the vote? Certainly, we have a motion from Commissioner Gardner, seconded by Commissioner Spoon. Commissioner Gardner, how do you vote? Y yes. Commissioner Kulturitis? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Spoon? Yes. Commissioner votes yes. Commissioner Tulowitzki? Yes. Commissioner Tulowitzki votes yes. And President Mellon, or yeah, President Mellon? Yes. Both. Very good. Yes. Thank you. And the agreement passes five to zero. Thank you. Um, we have no reports, no announcements, and that brings us to adjournment. So moved. I move we adjourn. We have a motion. Ken, and then are you going to second it now, Steve? Uh, sure, I will second then. Okay. All right. A motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The ayes have it, and we are adjourned at 8.26 p.m. Very good. See you all in two weeks.